Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian, and welcome to a very special series. Uh, thank you so much for getting my channel to 300 subscribers. I know that's, uh, that's a tough thing to do this day and age, so uh, thank you so much for that. And as promised, when I hit 300 subscribers, I was going to do something special. Well, here it is. I'm going to be playing the entire Space Quest series from start to finish. This is my collector's edition. It's a bit frayed around the edges. It's been sat on and it's been, uh, you know, it's gone through several moves. I've had this since uh, since I was a kid. But uh, And it's signed by Scott Murphy, no less. Uh, so, um, but anyway, I'm going to play the entire Space Quest series, but I'm not just going to play the entire series. I'm going to play the uh, hard to find versions, the uh, um, the modified versions, the weird versions, the versions you don't normally see on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to play the ultimate Space Quest series, uh, the best, the the best of the best, the cream of the crop, um, the gunk in the Orad ship. Fuck it, I'm going to shut up now uh, and get right into it because I know people hate long intros. Uh, but before we get started, just a quick message from my pal Danny. Hello, my name is Dan Avedon, uh, also known as Danny Sexbang on the internet, and I'm coming to you live from my bedroom. Uh, my, uh, my, I apologize for the not professional lighting of this little video series, but my buddy Trolls, also known as the Space Quest Historian, asked if I would do a couple of short intro videos to his playthroughs of the entire Space Quest series, um, and what they meant to me as a lifelong Space Quest fan. And so I'm just going to do them. I'm just going to randomly spout nonsense and see what happens. Um, this is for Space Quest 1, uh, the EGA version which I'm sure looks incredibly primitive um, by today's standards. But at the time, I was about six years old, seven years old when this came out. And it's hard to quantify, even though there were games that looked, quote unquote, better, like Mario, like Super Mario Brothers had come out, some early Nintendo stuff. Um, the imagination that like these early Sierra games had um, were hard to replicate and they just made your mind do some crazy things. So even though now you look at Roger Wilco, just like as like a bunch of little pixels meandering across the screen, um, at the time in your mind as a kid, you would see these incredible, you know, space exploration adventures uh, in full color and, you know, the way someone would watch, would watch Guardians of the Galaxy now, you know, just, uh, they were incredible and mind blowing and they engaged uh, your mind in a really fun way and it's an all-time classic you know um, and I think it's really stood the test of time in certain respects um, mostly it's creativity and it's very innocent early beauty so please enjoy Space Quest 1 the Sarian Encounter no I don't have a joystick the fuck you want all right, here we go. Space Quest 1, the Sarian Encounter. Chapter 1, in fact. Version 1.0x. Now, take a note of that, ladies and germs. Um, because uh, this is not the version that you get with uh, the uh, Space Quest collection, or the one you download on GOG and Steam and such. Uh, this is, in fact, the first version that ever came out of the game. And the reason I'm playing this is not just because it's fancy to play a version of the game that no one has, but for a very special reason that I'll show you on the very first screen of the game. Anyway, let's get the uh, intro out of the way. Light years from Earth's solar system, the people of the galaxy Irnon have been struggling to maintain the precious balance of life. The sun of Irnon is slowly dying, the planets grow cold, food is no longer plentiful, life will soon become impossible to sustain. The scientific community of Xenon devised a plan to convert one of Irnon's lifeless planets into a new sun. So this is not the uh, plot to Wrath of Khan at all. Don't get me wrong. The effort was centered around the development of a device called the Star Generator. The Star Generator would be capable of igniting an otherwise useless planet into a raging ball of flame. An expedition set out aboard the starship Arcada, or Arcada, depending on your preference, to successfully com complete development and testing of the Star Generator. The Arcada is now returning triumphantly to Xenon with the fully operational Star Generator. So, everything is fine, no worries, just... Game over, really. You serve as a member of the crew of the Arcada, as a janitor. That's right, a janitor. And not a very good one. You will probably have been sacked and replaced where the Arcada not millions of kilometers from Xenon. 
That's a lot of kilometers, by the way. As we join our story, you have just completed one of your famous on-shift naps in one of the janitorial storage closets. So right off the bat, we are just the fucking hero of this, you know, the toaster town. Uh, you'll also notice, musically, I am playing the Tandy 1000 version of the game, which means that it has three voices. Uh, normally, if you just boot the game up when you buy it on GOG or Steam, you just get the uh, PC speaker version with the, uh, you know, just a single tone. Uh, am I supposed to press enter? I think I am. Welcome aboard Arcada. To log on as a crew member, please enter your name. I am going to hit enter because that will default the game to Roger Wilco, the man, the myth, the legend. You are startled by the sound of an alarm. It is followed by an urgent voice which warns that the Arcada has been boarded by unknown intruders. It ends abruptly. And so begins Space Quest 1. Ah, it's fucking good to be back, man. I haven't played this in a while, so you'll have to... <laughs> there might be some edits, I don't know. We're, we're gonna get to a couple of sequences in, you know, in the future, which might test my motor skills beyond that which is normally capable of handling. Anyway, I promised you a very special reason why I was playing version 1.0x, and here it is. On the first screen of Space Quest 1, the Saren Encounter, you can type in Ken and... Ken Williams will come on screen and berate uh, the two guys from Andromeda for not getting the game finished in time. Is it shipping yet? I want this thing shipping yesterday. I thought you said the graphics would be done last week. <laughs> now, if you try this in the version uh, GOG Steam, uh, which is version 2.2, I think, don't get, don't quote me on that, um, then the Easter egg, Easter egg won't work. In fact, Ken Williams found out about this Easter egg uh, just after uh, this uh, first version had shipped and had it removed from all future versions. So, uh, also, don't ask me where I got this version. Uh, thanks to um, my pals PCJ and Kevin Wallace, uh, uh, compatriots of the old Space Quest community and such, they helped me track down this version. It was a lot of efforts and we had to go to a lot of backwaters parts of the internet. Don't ask me where we got this. Uh, so, but anyway, we are now playing version 1.0 of Space Quest 1. Now, actually, I should stop prattling around because we are in a bit of a hurry. Uh, the uh, self-destruct mechanism is activated and we probably should be getting a move on actually uh actually 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 like look look uh people are just not having fun aboard this ship i mean this is uh this is not a tenable position for people to be in but i am doubling back because if i double back a um scientist should stumble through the opposing door in just a tick he's not what an uncouth gentleman oh there he is the door opens, and a man you recognize as one of the lab scientist enters. He appears to be injured! Exclamation mark. And fluff. After only a few steps, he slumps to the floor like the jackass he is. <laughs> Pretty cool animation. Now, remember, this game came out in 1987. So, uh, this is... Uh, look, man. A large laser hole has been burned in his uniform, through which you can see previously unexposed tissue. Struggling painfully, he raises up on one elbow. And there he is. He tells you the Arcada is under attack and that the star generator is in danger. You had better leave if you value your life. He looks over towards the shelves full of cartridges and utters the word Astral Body. He then settles to the floor, lifeless. And uh, I actually thought it was Astral Bodies, plural. That just goes to show how long it's been since I've played this game. Uh, so, uh, look, screen? Welcome to the Arcada Data Archive. Say that three times fast. Model D12, blah, blah, blah. Please enter a cartridge. Astral, I don't abstract, Astral Body. Searching. Title found, retrieving. Now this will become very important later in the game, I'm sure. Actually, if you're watching this, uh, if you're watching this on my channel, the Space Quest Historian channel, I'm pretty sure you know what's gonna happen. So I don't know if I should keep this spoiler free. That's a decision I'm probably gonna make while recording this video. But anyway, here we go, thank you. Oh, might wanna get cut, fuck, get cartridge. Thank you, done. And off we go, now we can just Poop on table? No. Does not understand poop. Uh, this is version 1.0 anyway. After all. So, let's get this show on the road. Now, I would turn up the speed, but this is what happens when you do. He gets very jumpy. So, uh, I'm just gonna kick that back to normal speed. I don't want the timer to run out. Search this dude, because he has a keycard on him. 
This is Jerry, by the way, a person whom um, we will get back to when we play the VGA remake of this game. Which, um, yeah, so I'm not just going to play uh, the, the six games, I'm in fact going to play uh, seven of the games, because I'm also going to play the, um, let's say, controversial VGA remake of Space Quest 1. But that all in due time. I'll explain about controversy and shit. Uh, we can just have a look around this room. Look, all right, look around. This is the Star Generator Development Laboratory. Due to your incredibly low security clearance, you have never been allowed access to this room. However, look, pedestal. There's an empty pedestal here. It looks like it used to hold some large object. Maybe the Star Generator. Maybe. All right, uh, there's a screen up here. Now, actually, you don't have to do any of this. You can just fuck right off the ship, but I'm just gonna have a look at the screen. Warning! Self-destruct mechanism has been armed. Evacuate ship immediately. This is not a test. Time till detonation. Oh shit. Oh well, I have 15 minutes. Uh, I, I can do that. I can do this in 15 minutes. Sure. So um, the cartridge we just picked up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've decided now. I'm gonna go spoiler on this one. Uh, the cartridge we picked up uh, contains the plans for the destruction. No, actually, not, not the plans for the destruction. The plans for the star generator. Oh shit. You think you hear footsteps? I'm just gonna stay in the elevator. Right? Yep. Unable to see anyone here, the alien leaves to search elsewhere. The alien only has like a direct line of sight. It's like uh, like it's like playing Wolfenstein. You can't if you can't see it straight ahead of you, it doesn't exist. All right. Now this is where things get a little bit dicey because the uh, Sarian aliens, whom you just saw, nice looking blokes, uh, do have a habit of popping up uh, whenever you don't really want them to. So uh, what we're gonna do is uh, well get off the fucking ship. So, we are going to open the pod bay doors, Hal. Uh, press open button. Fuck off. Look, console. Uh, on the console by the window are two buttons marked open bay door and close bay door. So, open bay door, thank you. Fuck, press open. Thank you. Parser Games. 1987, this was state of the art. This was the stuff that made uh, LucasArts, uh, you know, Ron Gilbert, uh, made them want to develop. Oh, fuck, you think you hear footsteps. Don't you fucking do it. Don't you fu fuck. Made them want to develop the <laughs> graphic adventure genre uh, uh, in 1989 with Maniac Mansion. The alien observes his handiwork briefly, then leaves. Fine, fuck, I'll have to do that all over again. As you lie on the floor in a smoldering, carbo-gelatinous heap, you can't help but wonder why you bothered getting up this morning. No, fuck me. Thank you for playing Space Quest. Too bad you've doomed... No, wait, you failed miserably, and doomed all your people to a horrible death at the hands of the Sarians. If you continue playing as skillfully as this, we'll never have a chance for a sequel. Better luck next time. Well, fuck you. Alright. All right, we've got things key... Now, the good thing about these old Sierra games is you can actually key stuff in that you want to do uh, before uh, you actually get up to the object you want to use it on. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm not going to do... I'm not going to run into the same problem I had last time. Uh, we're back. We're going to do this. Use the key card. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, it turns out that if you search a body, you don't actually pick up the thing that you need. So, now we actually have the key card. Oh, joy of joys. And we're doing it again. We're back again. But this time, the Sarian didn't show up when I was at the elevator over uh, to the left. So, I'm a little worried that he might show up at any moment now and be a real bitch about it, too. So, now we actually have the keycard. You slide the keycard into its slot, you hear an audible click, and you take the keycard back. Things are fun, and happening. And we're clear. Now, from this point on, you're not going to get accosted by Sarians. Um, so, we're actually in the clear. We can take our, take our time and breathe, but... Um, we still have to get off the ship. Now, what is this, then? Look, object. Are you sure you want to look at it? Yes, yes, look, closet. Looks like an electrical gadget of some sort, so we shall get the gadget. Uh, that's the universal translator, by the way. We're gonna need that later on. Pre what? Press right. All right, cool. We shall don the space suit. So we walk all the way around the console. The console is adorned with many status indicators. One button on the right is marked airlock. So we press airlock, 
There you go. And now it is definitely time to blow this joint. But of course we should uh, have something to blow it with. So let's just, oh, not open. Look, controls maybe? Okay, looking at the console, console works. You see a button marked platform. There are also some gauges which don't interest you. So press platform. There we go. There is now an escape pod here. Cool. I think that will come in mighty useful. My god, that's a small little, a tiny little spaceship. All right, let's enter it and have a sit down. Now, of course, the first and obviously the first thing you should ever do when you get into a vehicle is fasten your seatbelt. Done. All right, so we press the power button. Boom, things light up. Then we press the, wait a minute. Maybe I should, maybe I should check this. I haven't played it in a while. The console consists of a screen, red status indicators, a throttle, and some buttons. The buttons are marked auto nav, power, and don't touch. All right, so we can pull the throttle now and get the fuck out of here. The door's ajar. All right, well, close the fucking door. Now we can pull the throttle and get out of here. Oh, that was easy. Oh, the stars just started. <laughs> the escape pod moves slowly out of the vehicle bay and into space. Now, bear in mind, 1987, this was cinematic as all shit. Now, congratulations, you have narrowly escaped an explosive death. Don't start patting yourself on the back just yet, though. You are now traveling aimlessly through the cosmos. Fun for the whole family. All right, so we shall uh, press the auto nav button in just a tick, but we shall, of course, I mean, there's a button marked do not touch. Of course, we have to try the do not touch button. What? Ah, it said don't touch. I warned you. Now see in the olden days in 1987 where there was no internet. Uh, this is what passed for um, promotion, like in-game promotion for other games. I mean, Sierra had your uh, catalogs and other, all this shit, but you had to go into software stores and uh, read printed magazines, if those even, you know, existed in 1987. They, they really didn't, uh, at least not for gaming uh, solely. They were like uh, trade magazines, like computer, like, uh, do, do you like the spreadsheet software? By the way, this company released a computer game. I've heard of these things. They're for children, uh, kind of thing. So this was a bit of a plug for or uh, King's Quest, the other Sierra game, the one that shall not be mentioned henceforth. Um, so you basically crash land into Daventry. This is the first screen of King's Quest 1. Ken, did you hear something? Uh, it was probably just the Gators entertaining another Space Quest player. Go back to sleep, Berta. Now, for some reason, Ken Williams had no problem with this screen. He only had his uh, little uh, rah rah Easter egg at the beginning excised from the game. Through a strange quirk of fate, or was it, because you're kind of a dick, you have stumbled into a place beyond time, space, and dimension. You have entered the Daventry Zone. That's right, the land of King's Quest. I said we weren't gonna say that. Anyway, uh, this will not help you since you are playing Space Quest. So you're basically dead. <laughs> so the Do Not Touch button kills you and then sends you to uh, King's Quest. Anyway, let's just restore that ba bad boy and press the auto nav button instead yes eventually something will happen i'm sure maybe we should have a look at the screen escape pod systems activated all systems are go all right the monitor flashes you study it to see what new information is being displayed it just took a while to boot up it's you know it's 1987 got to wait for stuff to boot Planet Profile. Where are we going? Ooh. Planet Corona. Dimensions a lot. Atmosphere breathable. Life. Civilization unknown. Temperature 40 degrees Celsius. <laughs> oh god, I live in Scandinavia. Anything above 20 is just awful. All right, cool. The, at the auto nav system has locked onto the small planet of Corona and the pod has begun its approach. Nothing to do now, but hang on. This is, I mean, I, I just can't get over it. this is uh, this is really a cinematic experience uh, for 1987 you got to remember uh, computers in 1987 had no sound cards had no mice I mean the fucking mouse was not uh, I mean if it was invented then it certainly wasn't used uh, you know just you know by anyone uh, there was no internet and there was no uh, I mean people used to play this with a fucking joystick 
So, uh, so the uh, the graphic detail, while primitive by today's standard, uh, is uh, and, and charming, obviously, was state of the art. This, I mean, people are used to playing text adventures. So when uh, that game, the KQ game, and Space Quest came about, I mean, shit, this was this was grand stuff. And just the fact that they've got these cutscenes in there. A term that had not been invented yet, by the way. It was invented by Ron Gilbert for Maniac Mansion. They just, uh, you know, just non-interactive scenes, um, which incidentally should fit on a tiny floppy disk, no less. My God, I am, you know, I'm still in awe of this shit. So maybe I should get back to actually reading the on-screen text. After a skull-jarring landing, you peer through the shattered viewing port out onto the desert landscape. A feeling of utter desolation settles in. You're in a fine mess now, Roger Wilco. And uh, that would so uh, that would be changed according to the um, uh, the uh, name that you typed in at the start. But we're going default here. Now, the one thing that is in here that we need is a survival kit. Thank you. Now, it, you're supposed to know this by having a look around the cockpit. Fuck it. I'm just going to open the door. The door's been permanently opened by the impact of the landing. Cool. Well, then we will exit craft. You're unable to leave with your seatbelt on. Well, thank fucking Christ we kept that seatbelt on. If you didn't, you know, crash landing would have killed us. So, unfasten seatbelt. Done. Exit craft. There we go. Now we are in th at the front of the craft. Now, this... Uh, object I'm about to pick up and will have stumped players for millions of years. Um, my good pal Jess Morris said infamously spends well over a year, I think a year and a half, uh, stuck on uh, the puzzle where you need the glass because it's not immediately obvious that there is a shard of glass that you can pick up. So anyway, welcome to scenic Corona, the planet that's named after a Mexican beer, uh, incidentally. Um, it was the two guys from Andromeda's favorite beer at the time. Look, it's very you know, scenic um, with the EGA, the 16 color EGA palette, of course. It's about as scenic as you can get. Bit of a, you know, desert, wastelandy, junk kind of thing. Uh, but uh, all in all, pretty spectacular. I know there's a cave in there and I am going to uh, go have a little visit um just know that this is probably going to end up being a bad idea that was not the cave oh there's a cave well it's it's the much rather larger cave looking structure so uh if we go in here oh that dude looks like he wants a friend to play with i am not having any of that i'm just gonna have a little leave can i actually have a look at him Are you sure you want to look at that? Yeah! <laughs> uh, look around. You're in the slimiest of caves. The odor in here is less than desirable. Can I? Okay, I know the dude's name is Orat, so okay, Orat is huge and ugly. Of course, your opinion may differ depending on what part of the universe you come from. It should also be mentioned that he is quite mean. So uh, we definitely need to take care of him. Now there are two ways to take care of him. One is that we can throw our water bottle at it. We are actually current in the uh, survival kit was a, I probably should take that out actually, open kit. This is your survival kit. It contains a Xenon army knife and a can of dehydrated water. Uh, the can of water is a cylinder of dehydrated water. At the top of the cylinder is a, rec a regulator and a short nozzle. On the side is a label. Let's read the label. Uh, it says Pelvitron's <laughs> dehydrated water. All you need is air makes 10 gallons. So 10 gallons of fucking water in that tiny little bottle. This is good because there's actually a timer running now. Uh, so whenever Roger gets thirsty, we have to drink the water. Now we could chug the water bottle at the Orat, which would make him explode because, you know, air, he bites into the can and just go boom. Uh, but then we would have no water. But that is a viable solution to the puzzle. You can actually do that. <laughs> Directions to use simply drink from nozzle. Idiot. Metered amounts will be dispensed. Caution, do not attempt to open or rupture. Misuse could result in personal injury and or flash flooding. Um, okay. So I am just off exploring this shit. I'm gonna go up here because this seems like a nice place to be. And uh, any moment now, my new bestest friend in the whole wide world should be joining us. I'm just waiting for his ass to pop in. He's not gonna pop in, is he? Oh, wait, there he is. Hi. 
How are you? Suddenly, you see a large black metal sphere falling from the sky. A Sarian spider droid. Why you know it's a Sarian spider droid, I have no idea. Upon touching down on the planet's surface, it sprouts legs and begins its search for you. You recall from an article in Space Piston magazine, okay, that explains that, that this droid is designed to seek out organic life forms and self-destruct when contact is made. And yes, this thing will follow your ass around the, um, uh, uh, the, the screen, uh, or when, whatever screen you're on for a very long time. And then it will come close to you and then it will just fucking blow up. Now there are, again, two ways of dispensing with this thing. One, I can push this rock on top of it, but if I miss... It lands with a pleasing thud. If I miss, I can just throw myself off it, apparently. <laughs> I didn't know he's gonna keep going. You've traveled a long way only to die by carelessly stepping to your death. What a clod. Oh, thank you. So anyway, he's he's very cute. So if you if you drop the boulder on him, that's cool. That's that puzzle solved. But, um, you know, um, th you only get one shot at it. And, um, yeah, that's it. So uh, we'll just leave uh, little Spidey Droid alone for now, and uh, and do the and do it the much more elegant way, which uh, is a sort of uh, two birds with one stone approach, if you will. Um, this will ne necessitate us just uh, doing a little more exploring. Hi down there. How you doing? You good? You keeping warm? Because it is quite warm, in fact. You know, forty degrees Celsius. That's a lot. Now this is a little interesting. Let's look around. You are high atop a rocky plateau near two halves of an arch. The desert below seems to stretch to infinity. <laughs> At least you're not alone. So if we step in between the arch, then boom! The elevator. Uh, and there's a line in the VGA remake that I just absolutely love. Hey, wait a minute! This elevator doesn't lower. It sucks! So now we're in the underground cavern, and now there is actually no way to get back up to the um, uh, the surface, and that is what usually, you know, just absolutely stalled uh, everyone in their tracks when they played this game the first time and didn't realize that you needed that glass item because once we get into the uh, next room, we just have to get past uh, this little dude here. Do -do 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 -do. I have no idea what that thing is, but. Uh, Let's have a look, see. I don't know. Crates. Uh, great, of course. The grate is made of metal and seems to be fastened securely to the floor. It's too dark to see down there, uh, down through the grate. There is, however, an odd smell emanating from down there. Mm hmm. Uh, yes. This place is just full of, you know, creatures that want to make friends with us. So, we'll just put the rock on the geyser. Silly human. Put rock on geyser. There you go. That opens the door. No reason why, actually. And. Get up here. Some careful navigation. I mean, all the walk behind the stuff is absolutely fantastic as well. Here we go. Now this is actually where you use the glass. You have to get right up there, hopefully not too close, and use the glass to sort of refract it uh, back to where it came from. I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but you have quite cleverly turned the beam upon itself, frying it into an inoperability. Now, if you didn't pick up the glass shard, you're stuck here. Absolutely stuck. No way to get moving. Uh, and you can't go back to the surface, so you have to restart from... Or either restart the game entirely, or restore a game from, you know, your previous save. That's the sort of dick moves we had to deal with in 1987. Now, here's the acid drop uh, puzzle. I'm just going to save my game here, because this is one of those motor skill puzzles I am not too good with. Um, Space Quest 1 was the first game in existence that used the placement of the on-screen character as part of the challenge. You know, as part of a puzzle, so evading these, um, uh, these acid drops is... I was, I was pretty good at that, actually. Um, it was the first of its kind. Uh, normally, uh, you know, before this, you had text adventures or you had text adventures with just a picture of what was going on, but no animation and no, you know, so this, this is... This we're looking at right now is actually the first arcade sequence in an adventure game ever. Cool. Now, I was just about to exit the screen here, but we might want to turn on the translator first. You turn the dial to the right, the light begins to glow. Because if we don't, we're quite screwed, in fact. Um, oh, wait, I still get a little reprieve here. I still have to cross the screen. 
Uh, so once we get into the next room, um, an alien is going to tell us things. And if we didn't have the uh, translator on, then uh, we wouldn't understand shit. So as soon as you enter the room, you find yourself surrounded by darkness. Suddenly you become aware of the fact that you cannot move or speak. No idea why. Maybe just, you know, darkness. You don't know where the fuck you're going. A strange unknown force has taken over. Or not. Boom. Now this is special effects. Massive, massive holographic image appears before you. You sense that you are the only life form in the area. And it begins to speak. <laughs> so, you have found your way to my hollowed chamber. They need this kind of booming dramatic voice. I mean, it's a giant fucking hologram. Look at the size of Roger. Look at the size of this thing. It actually has mouth movements. I know. <laughs> I keep going on about how impressive this game is. And it really, truly was impressive uh, back in the days. I have been monitoring your travels on our planet. It appears you are up the proverbial estuary without a means of locomotion. Locomotion. It means you're up shit creek without a paddle. You are obviously in need of transportation. Yes, that would be swell. Thank you. Let us see if you are worthy of our assistance. Are we really? Are we really, gents? On the surface lives a beast called Orat. He proves to be a bit of an annoyance on occasion. Dispose of him and bring back evidence of your conquest. Only then will I deal with your plight. Good luck, strange one. Now be off with you. And boom, they return us quite ceremoniously to the surface, actually. Uh, in the VGA remake, it's a bit less <laughs> ceremonious than that. Uh, hey, Spidey. Where you at, boy? You kind of need to have have some words here. Now, what I'm going to show you now is uh, the promised elegant way of dealing with both the Orat and the Spider Droid. Now, uh, just a quick side note. You know the, the uh, crack in the... Um, in the walkway here yeah that's gonna widen every time i walk over it but if you do this in order you have there, there's no worry but if you keep walking back and forth uh, like say if you were exploring the game as a normal adventure game player would you would um be in a bit of a problem why is he showing up now <laughs> it's like he he took off he just went fuck it i'm not staying down here and then you come out from the underground cavern he's just like wait a minute nah i'm coming back dude um, so could you please sort of, uh, come here, boy. Now we are going to introduce this young spider droid to, uh, what is going to be its bestest new friend. They're going to absolutely love each other. Come on here. Come on, dude. Hey, you coming? You here? Hello. Thank you. And now, now for intriguing uh, meeting of minds, there is the Orat, and there is the spider droid. Let's sit back and watch this unfold. <laughs> he seems to enjoy that quite a lot. Yep. The cave interior now features a lovely new jagged metal liberated entrails motif. The stench? Whew. Not even an all-text adventure would attempt that description. Excellent. So... Uh, mercifully, uh, he actually left behind a small evidence of his existence, which is this gooey little part over here. Let's have a look at it. it no, I do not possess that item. On the ground rests a gleaming chunk of Orat's anatomy. So, we will get the part. You reach down and take the Orat part in your hand. Some of it oozes to fill the space between your fingers. Just these small little sentences of flavor that just... So now we trek all the way back down through the elevator and uh, hand off uh, our new prize, our trophy, as it were. Ah, uh, finally, that did not take for fucking ever. Also, uh, <laughs> pretty awesomely, I, uh, you know, evaded the acid drops on my first try over here and uh, died twice while doing it while you weren't looking. So, anyway. Finally, we can prove our worthiness. Again, the massive holographic image appears before you. And has a quick think. 
So, you have returned. Fortunately, there is much more to you than meets the eye. There really isn't. No. Now, drop before me your proof of Orad's defeat for my inspection. Alrighty, Heidi, we will drop the part. You drop the Orad part to the ground. The vision is silent. You are startled by a rumbling and suddenly an oddly shaped door comes into view. It opens slowly. I think that there was a missed opportunity here to describe just the, uh, you know, the sound that the part made when it fell onto the floor. Squishy something. Nah, never mind. You hear a voice, different this time, beckoning you to step forward. And forward we shall step, but for now we shall end the episode and I will see you back for more Space Quest uh, in my ultimate series playthrough. So please, like, subscribe, do whatever you kids do, but do leave me a comment because I really love the comments. Tell me if I'm an utter failure and don't live up to my Space Quest historian handle or if you're actually quite entertained. I hope you are. Uh, but anyway, I will, as I said, see you back for more Space Quest 1 and then 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. And until then, around the Chrono Street. Ta-ta.